This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. Thank you, thank you for letting me come right into your space. Take just a few minutes to be with me today because today I'm going to be talking to you about supernatural power, which is the byproduct of the second work of grace, which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. But today I'm speaking to you from my series, which is called Speaking in Tongues. What is it? And is it really for everyone? I hope I've answered that question in the previous two programs. It really is for everyone, but you have to understand what it is, and then you'll understand why it's for everyone. You are a spirit. And it's natural for a spirit to speak. And when your spirit begins to speak, it begins to speak a spiritual language. And any person can speak that spiritual language if the tongue of their spirit can be loosed. And that's what happens when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then you move into the highest, most supernatural kind of divine prayer where your spirit communicates with God, bypassing the mind, my friends, it is amazing, and it really is for everyone. Now, maybe you've not received it yet. That does not make you a second-class Christian. It just means there's something else that God wants you to receive. But please order this entire series, and remember that it comes with a study guide, and this study guide is loaded. It will really help you to see all these scriptures and to read all of this while you see or hear the entire series. And we're offering you my book, which is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need them. My friends, we need the Holy Spirit to move mightily in our midst. We need it. That's why God gave the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we're offering you my book, which is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And this is not related to the subject, but because it's new, I want to tell you about it. And it is my book called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, How the Events of Noah's Ark and the Flood are Relevant to the End of the Age. We're living in the end of the age. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37, that what was happening in the world before the flood would be duplicated in some way just before the second coming. So we need to know what was happening in the world before the flood because it's going to happen again in some way. And all of that is in this book. This is really an end time book. But today is going to be so good. And today we're going to dive into the subject of divine power, which is the byproduct of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Reach for your Bible, and today I want you to go to John chapter 20. That's where we're going to begin in verse 20, verse 21, and verse 22. But first, I want to share one testimony with you. We appreciate your emails, and we were especially moved by the recent phone call we received from you. Please let the renters know we listen faithfully on YouTube and have gained a tremendous amount of growth from spending time in both volumes of Sparkling Gems from the Greek. My husband and I were going through a very difficult period of testing when those books first came into our lives, and they helped strengthen and equip us so much that we gave them to some other people because of what they have meant in our own lives. We will continue to listen and to learn, and we will pray for the ministry, especially for the safety of the renters, for God's protection over them. Well, thank you for your prayers for us. It really means a lot. And you let us know how to pray for you because we'll pray for you as well. But open your Bible to John chapter 20, and we're going to review again when the disciples were actually born again. Now, they'd been walking with Jesus for three and a half years. They were walking by faith. But when you come to John chapter 20, we find something happened that had never, ever happened in all of history. So let's go there. John chapter 20, verse 20. Jesus came into the upper room where they were. And the Bible says, when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. And when the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord, verse 21, then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you. Pay attention to that. Jesus said, peace be unto you. Then when you get to verse 22, 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. But notice he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Well, until that moment, they were like everyone else in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit would temporarily come on them and then leave them. And the Spirit of God would come back in certain moments and empower them and then lift and leave them. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit did not live inside any person's human spirit. But when you come to this verse, Jesus breathed on them. And the Greek is the word infose, which means to breathe into as if to inflate. It would be like if I put a balloon to my lips and breathed into it, suddenly that balloon would expand and it would catch my breath. Now in the same way, Jesus literally breathed into them and they received the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus then said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye is the direct form of the word lambano. Here's the word labete. It means right now, in this very moment, take it, receive it. And Jesus was telling them to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came into them. They were born again. They were sealed by the Spirit of God. And if they had died at that very moment, they would have gone to heaven because they were saved. And when they received the new birth, Jesus also said, peace be unto you. Peace comes with the new birth. Suddenly you're not troubled any longer. You're not worried about your eternal destiny because you know that you know that you know that you're saved. You've got the peace of God. You have peace with God. You've got a dominating sense of peace because you got saved. Wow. And by the way, if you've never called Jesus the Lord of your life, we want to pray with you. And if you'll call the number on the screen, we'll pray with you right now. You'll be born again and the peace of God will enter your life. Peace is the byproduct or it is the fruit of salvation. But that's not all. There's something else that Jesus wanted them to receive and something else that Jesus wants you to receive. And that's what I call the second work of grace which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it is distinctly different from the first work of grace. It is something that happens usually subsequently after salvation. And if you'll go to Luke chapter 24, I want you to see where Jesus told the disciples about this. And when you come to Luke chapter 24, listen to what Jesus said to the disciples just before he ascended to heaven. Listen to this, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Jesus was so excited about this that he began with the word behold, which in Greek is the word edu. It means wow. It carries a sense of amazement, which means as Jesus is describing the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the second work of grace, or some people call it the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is so excited about what these disciples are going to receive not many days from now that he says, wow, behold, this is amazing. Guys, listen to this. Jesus is injecting his own sense of excitement into what he's about to tell them. And then he adds, listen, I send the promise of my father up on you. Now, hold on. The Holy Spirit's already come in them. That happened in John chapter 20 when they were born again. So that's already something that's occurred. They're already saved. The Holy Spirit's in them. They're sealed with the Holy Spirit. He's in them. But now we're talking about a secondary work when the Holy Spirit's going to come upon them in some way. And in fact, Jesus goes on to say, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And that word endu, the Greek word enduo, is very, very important. It means to be clothed, and it describes a person that is so comfortable in his new set of clothing that he literally settles down into his new set of clothes, and he just feels comfortable there. And Jesus said, you're going to be endued with power. The word power is the Greek word dunamis. And the word dunamis is the old Greek word which described unparalleled power, extraordinary power, supernatural power. 
This word power, the word dunamis, is the old Greek word which was used both by the Greeks and the Romans to describe the full might of the advancing Roman army. It was the very word used by the Greeks and the Romans to describe a force of nature like an earthquake, a hurricane, or a tornado. Jesus is talking about amazing power, power that will turn you into a supernatural force of nature. Like a hurricane, you'll be able to blow evil out of the way. Like an earthquake spiritually, you'll be able to shake things up like a tornado. You'll be able to raise things out of the way that need to be removed. That's how much power is going to be in you. Or you're going to be like a single man army as the power of God advances through you to demonstrate unparalleled, extraordinary, supernatural power. And because Jesus uses the word endued, which means to settle down into a set of clothes, it means that when you receive this second work of grace, which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, this is supposed to be something you settle into, just like settling into an old set of clothes that you feel comfortable in. You are to operate in power, be comfortable in power, and power is the byproduct of receiving this divine endowment. Now let's go on. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1, we find the words of Jesus. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them. He didn't suggest it. He commanded them. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Wait, wait, wait. They've already been saved. That happened in John chapter 20. But now Jesus says there's going to be a subsequent experience. You're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. He's describing the secondary, subsequent, distinctly separate experience apart from their salvation. In salvation, they received peace. They received peace. But you know what? It's not enough to have peace. There's a devil in the world. There's problems in the world. Now, if all you do is receive salvation, glory to God, you're saved, you're on the way to heaven, you've got peace. You've got peace, but you're still in the world. You need more than peace, you need power. You need power to deal with the enemy. You need power to deal with problems. You need power to heal the sick and cast out devils. You need power in this life because there's a lot of things in life that have to be overcome. And Jesus knew it was not enough just to give them peace. You know, when I grew up, I grew up in a wonderful church where I was taught the Bible. I was saved there. Most of what I know about the Lord, I was taught in that church. But we did not believe in this secondary work of grace called the baptism and the Holy Spirit. So we really didn't have much power. We were the most peaceful, powerless people. <laughs> I didn't even know what it meant to walk in power, but we sure had peace. But when I found out there was power, what? Power to heal the sick? power to take authority over the devil, power to advance in life. No one had ever told me about that. Jesus didn't just give the disciples peace. He said, guys, we're not done yet. You need this secondary experience when the Spirit comes on you and clothes you with divine power. And he calls it the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And then when you come to verse 8, Jesus said, you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And that word power, again, is the Greek word dunamis, which means when the power of God comes upon you in this secondary experience called the baptism in the Holy Ghost or second work of grace, it gives you extraordinary, unparalleled power. It turns you into a one-man army with the ability to advance like you were never able to before. It turns you into a spiritual force of nature to shake things up and blow the enemy out of the way. That's the word power. And Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. But you know the word receive is a form of the Greek word lambano. The word lambano means to receive and it also means to take. And you need to understand Jesus wants to give this to you. You've got to receive it. You've got to take it by faith. You don't get saved if you don't cooperate. If you don't say yes, if you don't call Jesus the Lord of your life, if you don't ask the Lord to save you, 
my friends, you're not saved. And in the same way, Jesus wants to give you this secondary work, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He is ready to give it to you right now. He is in a giving mood, but you've got to take it. You've got to receive it by faith. And you can just say, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. And bam, he will flood you with divine power. You'll speak in tongues and new power will begin to operate in your life. Now, when you study the book of Acts, after they received the power of the Holy Spirit, suddenly these individuals who once were hiding behind doors for fear of the Jews, they emerged onto the streets. They began preaching. They began declaring the truth. They began healing the sick, casting out demons. In fact, when you get to Acts chapter 5, there were so many people needing to be healed that Peter laid hands on them on one side of the prayer line and his shadow caught them on the other side and even they were being healed by his shadow. That's how much power was in manifestation. Well, now hold on. Go to Ephesians chapter 6 where we're going to see this word endued one more time. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, the Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. That word strong in Ephesians 6 10 is the same word in duo translated in dude in Luke 24, verse 49. And let me tell you something about this word. It's a compound of two words, the word in and the word duo. The word in means to be in something like to be in a vase or to be in a vessel or to be in some kind of a receptacle. And the word duo, which describes this supernatural power. But when you compound the two words together in duo, it means to be clothed with power or it takes this divine supernatural power and in it puts it inside something, which means this is not a power that was created just to be flea, free floating in the atmosphere. This is a power which is designed to be placed into some kind of a vessel or a receptacle and that leads to you and me. We are divinely fashioned by God to be the receptacle for this power. God wants to clothe us with this power. He wants to fill us with this power. And look what happens when you receive this endowment of power. It goes on to say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word power is the Greek word kratos. The word kratos describes what I would call the eruptive or demonstrated power of God. This is not theoretical power that you just intellectually believe in. It's power you can see. It's power you can feel. It's power that you can experience. For example, if you had been one of the soldiers at the tomb on the day of the resurrection, when the power of God came, the earth shook. It was Kratos' power, this same kind of power. They didn't just believe in it or hear about it. They felt it. They experienced it. We're talking about the power of signs and wonders and supernatural feats. But wait, the verse goes on to say, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. What's the difference between power and might? They don't even sound the same in English and in Greek, they're not the same. The word power is this word kratos, demonstrated, eruptive power. But in Greek, the word might is iskuos, kratos, iskuos. They don't even sound the same. So he's talking about two different things. Well, the word might, the Greek word is skuos, is a Greek word which describes a man that is bound with muscles. We would call him a muscular man, like a bodybuilder. He is just strapping with muscles, huge, bulging with muscles. He's a mighty man, and he's able to do mighty things. Well, this verse says, be strong in the power of his might, speaking of God, which means when you receive a divine endowment of power, when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit in some way, in some way which he does not explain, it connects us to the muscular ability of God, the muscular might of God, the power of his might. Well, now hold on. If that word might pictures a man that is bound with muscles, what kind of muscles do you suppose God has? I say that if we could see the right arm of God, we would say he is Mr universe in the truest sense of the word. No one has the muscular ability of God. And somehow when we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or this second work of grace, it divinely connects us to God's mighty muscular abilities. And when we pray in the name of Jesus and take action, God flexes his muscles and divine power, Kratos power, 
flows through us to perform signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Dunamis, extraordinary, unparalleled power. And my friends, what I want you to see is that when you receive the second work of grace, which is the baptism in the Holy Ghost, it is natural for you to begin to move in divine power because power is the byproduct of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And if you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, today is your day. You call us, we'll pray with you, and you'll receive it right now. Just call the number on the screen. But hey, I've got more to say to you, and then I'll be back in just a moment. Someone has asked the question, I've been praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for many years, but I've never spoken in tongues. What should I do? Well, if you want somebody to pray with you, reach out to us right now because we'll pray for you. And my friends, by the time we're finished praying with you, you will begin to pray in tongues. But praying in tongues belongs to any person that's been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And in fact, if you study the entire book of Acts, every time someone is baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is always accompanied with them speaking in tongues. And my friends, when you speak in tongues, it's just the release of your human spirit, which then begins to fellowship in spiritual language with God. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that when you pray in tongues, you begin to speak divine secrets. Praying in tongues is one of the highest levels of prayer that exists. But you can pray in tongues if you've prayed for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And if you want us to pray with you, you reach out to us right now. If you do not speak in tongues, or if you do speak in tongues, this series, Speaking in Tongues, What Is It and Is It Really for Everyone, will be an eye-opener and a game-changer in your life. Many people are confused about tongues, so Rick, who was also once confused about this subject, takes you into the scriptures to see what the Bible says about speaking in tongues, the purpose of tongues, are tongues really for every believer, the value of speaking in tongues, and so much more. You'll forever thank God for the clarity you receive in this important five-part series, and it's available in digital or physical format starting at just $11. In addition, we are also offering the books The Holy Spirit and You for $17, and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit for $12. Both of these books have become favorite resources for Christians whose hearts are hungry for more of the Spirit of God. In each of these books, Rick gives you deep teaching and practical help to walk into the powerful relationship with the Holy Spirit that your heart longs to experience. Don't wait. Order your copies today. Bundle the five-part series, Speaking in Tongues. What is it and is it really for everyone? And the books, The Holy Spirit and You, and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And for a limited time, we are also offering Rick's book, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood for a special pre-sale discounted price. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey, this is Rick Renner, and I'm standing in one of the long corridors in the Tulsa headquarters building. And these corridors are lined with photography of our past ministry. For example, here, it's amazing. You see a picture of me and Denise first starting our ministry as we're traveling in the car with Paul and Philip on her lap, and there's little Joel. But then you look over here, and you see our Russian ministry. Here's Golden Stars with some of the Russian movie stars who came to help us. At that event, we had more than 16,000 senior citizens show up. That is amazing. Then you see the youth ministry, and us working with members of the government. And here you see again me and Denise in our first little church we started in Arkansas many, many, many years ago. And then you look over here and you see us filming TV programs. I mean, there's just so much. And when you walk through these hallways and look at all these pictures, you're just surrounded with what God has done throughout our ministry. And it is amazing. And now, every day in this facility, ministry is taking place. Oh, I wish you could hear the phone calls. And when our team begins to pray, it is like a roar of prayer that you can hear when you walk through our partner care ministry or the letters that are going out or the resources. And resources are books and USBs and all kinds of video and audio. And it's going to the ends of the earth. And we're able to do all of that because we have a facility where we can do it. And 
paying off this facility is our current goal. You know, when we started the Ministry Expansion Project, it was quite large, but we've already paid off half of it. That's amazing. And you helped us to do that. And I want to say thank you. Please help us continue until we finish it. And if you're not a part of the team yet, please pray about becoming a part of our Ministry Expansion Project giving team so we can pay off all of this and then liberate all that money to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that's our desire. So I want to say thank you in advance for helping us. Well, today we have covered the fact that power is the byproduct of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, your human spirit is released so you can pray in tongues and you also receive an endowment of power. And my friends, God wants you to settle into that mode of power and he wants it to flow through your life. But we've got one more teaching on this subject, which we'll come back to tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to see the other benefits of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. But I want you to order my entire series, which is called Speaking in Tongues. What is it? And is it really for everyone? And the answer is yes. It is for everyone who will receive it by faith. And I want you to also order the study guide that goes with it. And we're offering you my book, which is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And we're offering you my book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Friends, they're not optional. We need to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I want to pray for you right now and remind you that if you'll call the number on the screen or send us an email, we'll pray with you over the phone or the moment we get your email in our inbox, we're going to really pray for you. But Father, I pray for the power of God to be released in my dear friend. Jesus, baptize them in the Holy Spirit, refill them with the Holy Spirit and let your power flow through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it's been good. But I'll see you tomorrow. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.